You know, coming to Alaska in 1990, playing a big role in, in what's going on up here, call it pioneering um, heli skiing in Alaska, has just been an honor and, and also a very humbling experience in itself. Alaska is just a whole different animal. Chugach Range that we're in is it holds 40% of the world's glaciers. We get anywhere from 45 to 85 feet of snow a year. Um, when you look across this range in the summer, and uh, you're just like, that's amazing, we ski that stuff. I mean, they're 90 degree cliffs, and um, you know, after you get 85 feet of snow on them, all of a sudden it's a 48 degree slope, and you're skiing right down them, and just beautiful soft powder. And just really different than anywhere else in the world as far as what you can guide and what becomes a skiable line and is realistic to guide safely. It just sometimes boggles your mind to look at it in the summer and think that you can ski down that, that particular face. <laughs> this place is amazing. I'm not religious, but you know, if I'm about, I'm about, I'm about to take up religion. <laughs> Looking at this is probably as close to heaven as I'll ever get. Over the years, we've evolved guiding protocols to what I'm sure of are the highest level of remote guided aircraft operations. We've turned the client into a team group emphasis. It gives you the ability to increase your safety, their safety, and to provide a higher quality experience or descent. This way. This is definitely no man's land this way. So <laughs> nobody goes beyond this point, but we're all getting to go to ski this way. We'll hike up a ways, kind of where those flags are. Sure. We'll drop yeah. in there. Yeah, this place is awesome, man. It's like, I don't know how to describe it. There's no word for it. It's the best. 15 years, I mean, I come out here, I'm just like, how's it going to be, you know? In 1990, they hosted the World Extreme Skiing Championships and they brought the best gears in the world to come up and, and see the place and to compete. And the idea was to get Valdez, Alaska on the map and, and show how good and amazing the skiing was here. You know, when I arrived, it was, it was obvious to me this was the best skiing in the world. And we knew it right away when all of us arrived. It was like, wow, this is, this is it. This is the top level of skiing and, and guiding as far as remote guided aircraft operations. You're going out into in terrain that doesn't exist anywhere else. And it's just so vast and so big and, and the scale is so large that you, know, you really do have to develop people to understand back into protocols when you bring them out there. And, The aircraft guiding really began in Canada and then took hold in the U.S. But it was definitely not implementing backcountry protocols. It was guides basically guiding people down the mountains and using each guide as a backup and basically just having the client follow the guide. The best part of Alaska protocols have evolved the guiding principles to educating the person you're bringing into the mountains and developing this group team emphasis. Um, they, they learn how to use safety equipment, the avalanche transceiver, the probe, and they carry a shovel, they carry extra food and warm clothing. The goal is to have them understand it, to implement it, and be a, a huge part of the day. They're not just going to be following a guide around. They're going to be out there participating and, and taking on a role within the group to increase the safety, and it also increases what you can access. And this person can take this education into all of the skiing and all the anywhere in the world. It's just going to make them a much better skier, a much better partner, a much better backcountry traveler.
Remote guided aircraft operations is, is different than a lot of guiding where you're guiding from the top down, you know, from the summit on the way down the slope. You don't just dig a snow pit at the top and consider it that you've got perfect snowpack. You have to be assessing the whole way down the mountain. It's really dynamic in the way that that you do it. In, in a lot of ways it gives you a lot more tools to make it safer, but it, the other side of it is if you miss a step, it can make it even more dangerous than um, guiding from the bottom up. So it's really important that when you're training guides that you're really teaching them how to assess the snowpack, the route that you're going to take, all the steps you need to make as you descend down a mountain. You look down a slope and you know, your first time in Alaska, you can't really tell how big it is. It's just there's nothing to compare it to. You really got to educate people on how big it is and what the scale is and how many feet is it to that rock. And um, So you're not just guiding them, but you're instructing them on how to ski in bigger mountains. You're instructing them on how to figure out the scale of what they're on. You're out there with a full-on mountaineering pack. You've got your first aid kit, extra warm gear, prussics, your Jumars, rope, um, crampons, ice axe, um, skiing people down these, these huge mountains. And then each client and each individual that you're guiding carries safety equipment as well. And you have to educate them how to use this equipment and how to implement this equipment if something did happen. Bringing this person into it and having him take on a responsibility and learning the whole process and how and why you're making decisions is, is so important. It gives you the ability to provide a higher quality experience but also makes it a lot more exciting.